what sink should you buy? With so many materials out there, how do I know which one is the best? Let's look at the different materials. Hopefully it'll help you make a decision when you're purchasing your next sink. For most of my life, stainless steel has been the standard sink material that's been on the market. Stainless steel is very durable, sanitary, easy to clean, and relatively inexpensive. It comes in a variety of gauges, which means its thickness. So anywhere normally from 16 gauge to 23-ish gauge, 23 being thin and 16 being thicker. Commercial sinks can sometimes be 14 gauge. For the average consumer like me or you, normally we're gonna be looking at sinks that are like 16 to 18 gauge. There's a couple issues with stainless steel. One, it's pretty noisy. So things are clanging and banging around in there. And two is that it doesn't hold heat that well. Metal is a conductor, it helps just dissipate heat. For me, that's not a big deal. I don't fill up my sink with water because I have a large single. I don't hand wash dishes that way. The generation before me would really find this beneficial because they're used to filling up that sink with water and letting it sit there. So the longer that water sits there, the longer it can stay hot or warm, the better. Now they clang and bang. I mean, it's a sink. I guess it's supposed to clang and bang. And for the last number of years, they've been adding these rubber pads on the bottom of the sink, and that's to help with the noise of that sink. So when you're putting things in there, it's a little bit of absorption. I don't know if it makes a difference. Stainless is a great choice if you just want a run of the mill, really durable, gonna be there for a long time sink that you can use. Stainless is a great option. All right, I'm interrupting my own video because I realize there's a few things I still wanna say about stainless steel. I wanna bring you some more of the benefits to stainless steel and not leave you hanging on that aspect. Number one is that it's corrosion resistant, meaning that it resists corrosion. They use chromium when they're making stainless steel and this component is the key ingredient to making stainless steel what it is today. Another benefit which may not be a big deal because you're using stainless as a sink is that it's fire and heat resistant and you don't have to worry about any type of thermal shock which you can get with other materials Now, one of the best features of stainless steel as far as using it in a sink is concerned it is extremely hygienic because it is non-porous it's easy to clean it's easy to maintain and of course they make it with undermount top mount apron sink you name it you can get it in stainless. Anywhere from $300 to $600 is going to get you a pretty good stainless steel sink. And that depends on the gauge and the brand and how much they're actually marking that sink up. Composite sinks are another great option. They're made of granite or quartz aggregate and they're mixed with resin. Normally about 80% of some kind of powdered granite and 20% of some type of resin to help you mold that sink and shape it into a uh, sink. These sinks are great and they've been marketed against stainless steel as being able to hold the heat of water and not as loud. Again, not a big deal if you don't hand wash your dishes in a bowl filled with water. Having a sink hold heat is here nor there. But if it's a thing that you do and that's how you use your kitchen, then this may be a good option because that bowl will hold water hotter longer. The thing that is an actual real concern that you should really watch for is the knockouts for the faucets. Usually when you buy a granite or quartz or a stone sink, it comes with one hole already knocked out for you. But if you look underneath that sink, especially if it's a top mount sink, because an undermount, this wouldn't matter. But for a top mount sink, one hole is already cut out for you, and the rest underneath, you got a bunch of options, probably four or five other holes that you could knock out. I've seen this go horribly wrong, and I wouldn't want that to happen to you. So if you're doing that, be very cautious to follow the instructions precisely because this is what will happen is you will pop that hole out and a big chunk of your sink will just go blam. It's so nerve wracking to take your $400 brand new granite sink, pop a screwdriver through one of those knockouts, not knowing what's gonna happen. These sinks are very durable. They're meant to be used by you, the consumer, and normally you're not gonna have any issue with these types of sinks. Like anything, there's extremities and extreme case uses where you drop something majorly heavy in there and that whole sink just goes shatter and you know that's not good they're also quite a bit heavier than a stainless steel sink and normally it is recommended that they are supported especially if you're using an undermount sink the manufacturer will give you instructions on how to do that don't skip that part it is very important make sure that thing is secured you won't regret it and on average you're looking at a range of four to eight hundred dollars the great thing about these sinks is that you can get different colors and that's a really nice feature. So if you want a white or a blue or a gray or a black, you can get that. If you're my age and you were born in the 70s, most likely you're familiar with a porcelain enamel sink. 
So this is a cast iron sink that has porcelain enamel. Maybe your parents or your grandparents had one of these sinks. They were nearly indestructible, so easy to clean, really nice high gloss finish, and heavy as... Now, unbeknownst to me, cast iron sinks are very popular. More and more retailers are carrying more and more varieties of cast iron sinks. And one of the main benefits of cast iron sink is just their durability. They're going to last a long time. The only downfall is that it is fairly brittle that if you did bang that and chip off a piece of that porcelain enamel, it's gonna be an issue. So, take that into consideration. One viewer commented specifically about their porcelain enameled sink, and they said, we currently have an almond colored porcelain enameled sink, which is chipped and very hard to keep clean. Anything metal leaves marks, so I'm constantly scrubbing to get that out. Thank you for that comment because it helps everyone else figure out, is this a sink choice that I should go with? Should I go with porcelain enamel or should I look for something else? What they're doing now are what's called fire clay sinks. Fire clay sinks are meant to mimic this old style porcelain enameled sink, except that they're made of clay and not cast iron. They're still porcelain enamel. They still have that really nice high gloss porcelain finish. Most often you'll see a fire clay in the shape of a farmhouse apron front sink. So I know right off the bat that probably half of you just aren't gonna like these because they're farmhouse sinks. They're made by molding clay at very, very high temperatures and then they enamel it and again, they bake that thing to up to 2000 degrees. Bammo, you get this really, really durable sink. They come in limited colors, but again, you can get them in colors. These sinks are even heavier than the other ones I've mentioned and they definitely need to be mounted properly. Because a lot of these sinks are apron front sinks or a farmhouse, they sit on a platform, which is very beneficial. But if you don't have a platform for that thing to sit on, you definitely have to brace it because it will be heavy and adding anything to it is only gonna make it heavier and you don't want that sink to fall out or anything to happen to it. Five to $800 is gonna get you your standard fire clay sink. I'll link to all these sinks in the description below. You can check them out if you wish. They are affiliate links and I do get a commission if you choose to purchase one from there, but you can get these sinks anywhere they sell sinks. Now there's also sinks out there that are material match, such as Corian or Staron, which is an acrylic solid surface, and they can mold sinks of the same material right into that surface. There are no seams, which is a really great feature, especially if you don't like trying to clean all the grime and gunk, either from your undermount rim or from your top mount, this is a great way to go. But of course, you have to be also purchasing the countertop surface along with it. These integrated sinks are very similar to their cousins, the granite composite sinks, and that they're made also with resins and with mineral dust. However, the amount of resin used in making these acrylic sinks is much higher than the amount of aggregate and minerals that's in the composition. One of the pros of this material is that it can be easily repaired because it is the resin that allows you to repair it. Another viewer who has a Corian sink commented this. Currently have Corian integrated sink and counter. I like how easy it is to directly clean the counter into the sink without having a lip around the edge of the sink undermount. Nothing gets in the edge between the sink and the countertop. However, the white sink has discolored and stained after 25 years. A hard scrub with Comet gets most of the stains. Again, it's great to hear from people who have experience with these surfaces firsthand. I will say this, if you've had that sink for 25 years and it's still in great shape and you just need a little bit of Comet to clean that sink, I'd say you got a pretty good deal. So take this into consideration. If you're looking for a material that's gonna last a long time, maybe this is an option for you. And the price of these is gonna vary depending on the price of the countertop choice that you're going with. For the sink option, normally most retailers and most manufacturers will have the price per foot for their countertop, and if you want a sink, it's so much money. Normally, you're gonna pay three or $400 to have the sink added on, and that depends on the type of material, depends on the manufacturer, of course, that you're using, and depends on the size, and there's a few different factors. So to nail down a price for that, you actually have to go through the manufacturer to find that out. We gotta answer the question, what is the most popular sink material choice out there for consumers? What are people picking? What is trending? What is the choice that you should be making potentially? This study by the NKBA done in November of 2020 outlines what the trends are gonna be for the next three years and what consumers are picking. Now the question being asked here is, which of the following kitchen sink materials or styles will be extremely popular over the next three years? And you can see stainless steel is coming in at number one. Next to it is composite solid surface and then the others fall underneath. Now the only thing that is surprising to me is that porcelain cast iron is 
doing better than fire clay. And this correlates very well to the poll that I sent to you, the viewers, just the other day asking you if you had the choice between granite composite or stainless, which one would you choose? And it's very clear that stainless is the way that people are going at 76%. It looks like, at least for now, stainless steel is gonna be the sink material that most consumers are choosing. However, there are so many options out there. Do your research and hopefully this video helps you to decide what kind of sink you wanna go for. If you figured out the type of material you want your next sink to be, there's also an issue you need to overcome and that is where to place that sink. Check out this video where I help you decide exactly in your kitchen where your next sink should be. Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing if you like my channel. Bye. If you would like me to design a kitchen for you, check the link in the description below and I can help you with that.